Praise the Lord. I want a good headquarters. Hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. Welcome back from the crusade. I pray that all your efforts and everything we have done together will yield and bear fruit in Jesus' name. Now is the time to really concentrate on the follow-up. And uh, all the instructions that our leaders are giving on the follow-up, on establishing churches, planting new churches for them, let's all follow. And the Lord will help us gather the fruits of the crusade in Jesus' name. You will not lose your reward. We thank the Lord for all our state overseers and national overseers and all our people on ground who made uh, that crusade a success. And uh, Ondo people in particular and our state overseer there in Ondo, Akure Ondo state, I pray that the joy of the Lord will continue with all of you in Jesus' name. And as we follow up and do our work uh, properly, it will bring joy in your heart as we see the preservation of the fruit of the work of your hand. Amen. Amen. I will see. I will see the preservation of the fruit of the work of God in my hand. Well, whether you said it or not, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name for bringing us again in your presence. And we're asking, O oh Lord, that today, as we look at your word, that faith unwavering, faith undiluted, and faith unpolluted, and faith undeniable will bring uh, the result in every life in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, that we will not be unbelieving. We will believe your word to the point we receive all the fulfillment of your promises in our lives in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. A good, good day. Amen. God bless you. you can see that we're coming to Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 6. Hebrews 11 verses 1 to 6. Now faith is the substance of things so far. The evidence of things not seen. For by it. That is by faith. Verse 2 now. In verse 2 for by it the elders obtained a good report. In verse 3 it says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear in verse 4 it says by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous God testifying of his gifts and uh, by each he being dead yet speaketh in verse 5 it says by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God and then in verse 6 it says but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him tonight we are looking at the word of God concerning the prevailing power of unwavering faith faith unwavering faith undiluted faith steady and solid in the presence of the Lord faith that trusts God absolutely faith with absolute confidence in God unwavering unshaking unbeatable 
unconquerable faith that knows that God is and God will do what he has promised because he is a faithful God. The prevailing power of such a faith, the prevailing power, whether we're asking for salvation, that power prevails and grants us salvation, or we're asking for healing that faith because it's unwavering in God because it is absolute in God gives us that healing or we're asking for sanctification for holiness for the purifying of the heart and for the taking away or putting of the Adamic nature as we believe he is able to do that because he promised that or we're asking for deliverance we're asking for dominion he does that whatever he has promised his word because he's a faithful God and we approach him understanding that he cannot deny himself he cannot deny his word and we come with that unbending faith unwavering faith undeniable faith it has prevailing power the prevailing power of unwavering faith there are three things we're looking at today number one the true perception of undiluted faith true perception that you understand that you know that you perceive that you understand within yourself that this is true faith and as i manifest that true faith then the lord will answer prayer number two the towering pattern of undeniable faith the pattern we we'll see in scripture and we we'll see in contemporary time towering above every other idea or opinion the towering pattern of undeniable undeniable faith number three the triumphant power of an undying faith it's a kind of faith that does not diminish a kind of faith that does not go down a kind of faith that does not die a kind of faith a living faith that keeps on living and it's in your heart dynamic it's in your heart it is fiery it's in your heart it cannot be pushed away it's an undying faith and it has triumphant power let's look at number one number one is the true perception of undiluted faith it says in hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen the true perception of undiluted faith three things we're looking at number one the definition and description of sound faith Number two, the decision and demonstration of sincere faith. Number three, the dedication and diligence of sustained faith. Look at number one there. Number one is the definition and description of sound faith. It says in Hebrews 11, 1, the definition now faith is the substance of things hoped for it's like when you buy something you've not really seen the real thing you bought but you've got the receipt in your hand that receipt very small you can carry that you can hold on to that even though the thing you have bought you cannot carry you have to use a car you have to use a lorry and you have to use um, you know something heavy to carry that thing but the receipt you can carry that and you carry the receipt about and the moment you see that receipt you know you have that machinery you have that thing coming and there's no doubt in your heart because that receipt is the substance of the things you are hoping for it is the evidence of things not seen that receipt in your hand that C of O in your hand and that title deed in your hand is the evidence you possess that land. The land may be so wide and the land may be like hectares and acres and you cannot even see the end. 
but the C of O is just a sheet of paper and you can see that it's not heavy you can tuck it in your pocket and as long as that paper is in your hand it is the evidence of things not seen you might be over here and the land is in another city the land or the house is in another country but because you hold that evidence in your hand you can tell everything even though you are not seeing it with what your blood with your eyes yet you know it is mine that is the definition and the description of faith that it is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen look at chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 18 in chapter 6 verse 18 that by two immutable things unchangeable things in which it was impossible for god to lie that's the reason we have faith we know that it's impossible for god to lie it says we might have strong consolation is strong confidence who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope that is before us that thing we're hoping for we have strong consolation and we have strong confidence that it is ours because we know the god who has promised cannot lie it tells us in verse 19 it says in verse 19 which hope we have as an anchor of the soul as an anchor of the soul when ships are kind of anchored by the seashore the storms will come but because it is anchored at the anchorage there it is steady the same thing with us the storms of doubt and the psalms of opinion and the storms of ideas and the psalms of what if it does not happen all those storms become bad because we have hope in the lord and we know that our god cannot lie whatever the storm of the of doubts may come it is anchored on that fact that it is impossible for god to lie and so we have entered to, to that which is within the veil look at chapter 11 verse 27 of hebrews it says by faith he forsook egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seen him who is invisible he saw the invisible more than the visible pharaoh was visible touchable we can see him but moses saw the invisible god the great god because he saw that great god the invisible god beyond pharaoh beyond the magicians beyond all the people around him that's why he had the faith and the confidence and he did everything he ought to do knowing that the invisible one that he could see that that invisible one will not bring any disappointment to the same thing when we say we believe god we believe god we see him more than we see the sickness we see him more than we see the defeat we see him more than we see the challenges we see him more than we see visible things on earth and we pray and we declare and we decree as if we saw the invisible by our side doing what he has said he will do in second corinthians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 13 it says we having the same spirit of faith the same spirit of faith that enoch had that abraham had that noah had that all those patriarchs and the worthies of old that they had we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed therefore advice spoken we also 
believe he has given us a promise just like he gave them promises and when he gave them the promises they believed the promises and the same way we believe the promise of god for us it says therefore we also believe and therefore speak look at verse 18 in verse 18 it says while we look not at the things which are seen what we look not at the negative things around us what we look not at the pain which we feel what we look not at all the threats of the enemy physical natural that we see on earth we don't look at them because faith looks at the impossible he looks at the Almighty. He looks at the Omnipotent One. He looks at the All Powerful One. What we look not at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, they'll vanish away. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Look at number two here. Number two here is the decision and demonstration. Of sincere faith when we have faith that faith the confidence we have the trust we have in the Lord will lead us to a good decision it calls us to repent and we have faith in him will act it calls us to be righteous the faith we have in him will make us to act it calls us to serve him sacrificially the faith we have in him not looking at our predicaments not looking at the things around us not looking at business not looking at the downturn of whatever because we have this faith in him unshakable unwavering undiluted because we have this faith in him sound and sincere faith we're able to do everything he calls us to do without looking back hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 again it says now now faith is always now hope is in the future but faith is now now faith is the substance of things so for the evidence of things not seen and let's see people that manifested such faith undiluted faith in the word of the lord undiluted faith in the revelation of the lord in first Kings chapter 19 verse 19 in first king chapter 19 verse 19 so he departed thence and found elisha the son of shepherd who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him and he with the 12 and elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him cast his mantle upon him you remember if you've read the chapter very well you remember that god told elijah that he should go and anoint elisha in his room so that implied that elisha will leave what he was doing and you'll become like what we call today full-time worker servant preacher prophet in the ministry and so elijah did not uh, talk and talk and talk elijah did not have any motivational talk for him or the act for him he took the mantle and threw it on him that's a uh, practical language he didn't talk and talk and elisha understood but understand elisha will not know he had not known about the taking away the catching up of elijah that was future he had not known about the possibility of dividing jordan that will be future he had not known about all the exploits and the miracles that will happen through him that will be future yet he decided in spite of the fact that he didn't know what will happen in the future he decided there are people today they are, they are waiting okay i hear the call of god i hear god wants me to give all my time 
all my life, all my skill in serving the Lord before I take the decision. Tell me the prospects. What will happen? Because I have something I'm doing. Look at Elisha. He had 12 yoke of oxen. And he was plowing with the 12. He was already a successful, established businessman. Yet, he didn't, uh, you know, dilly-dally. He didn't delay saying, If I leave the known for the unknown, what will happen to me? That's where faith comes in. Because there is the decision and demonstration of sincere faith. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, And he left the oxen and he ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother and say goodbye to them. Then I will follow thee immediately like that as some people hear about salvation and repentance for years and they don't repent they're still meditating they're still uh, calculating they're still saying maybe some people hear about holiness and sanctification and purity of heart for so many years and they're still consecrating uh, and they're still wondering should i should i know some people here they know the doctrine about the baptism the immersion and the power of the holy ghost he shall say power they have heard they know the references they know everything uh, yet although they have heard for years Yes, they have not, um, you know, taken the step to be sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some people know about evangelism going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. They know about it, but they have not started yet. Some people hear about restitution. This is what you do to make right our lives so that you can have a conscience void of offense towards God and towards man. They're still dilly-dallying, but in the case of, Eli of Elisha it says let me I pray thee kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow thee it's not that I want to seek permission from them if they allow me the decision is yours if you have faith in God you will know that this is the calling of God and this is your consecration this is the demand of God and this is your decision decision the decision to follow and then he said i will follow thee and he said unto him go back again what for what have i done to thee look at verse 21 in verse 21 it says and he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat and he arose and he arose the lord has spoken to elijah and Elijah knew the details. Elijah knew that this man will be the one to take the baton and keep on running the race that is set before him. But he had not discussed details with Elisha. And Elisha was faithful. And Elisha made the first choice and the, the, the foremost choice and he followed. He arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him ministered on to, not ministering to the people he wasn't praying for the people okay i've left everything i'm doing i'm a busy man i've been a skillful man now that i'm following you what am i going to do no assignment just pouring water on his hand that he will wash his hand and yet he knew that faith is the substance of things so far and the evidence of things not seen i cannot see it yet but i know it's coming when you're able to rise up like that and take a decision and follow the lord and do what the lord is expecting to be done without looking back without asking questions without doubting that is faith sincere faith in matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 19 matthew chapter 4 verse 19 and he said unto them 
follow me and i will make you fishers of men then in verse 20 we were told and they straightway left their nets and followed him that's the decision if somebody has faith in god faith in christ faith in the word of god he'll be a man a woman of decision and you have to leave something you have to leave the past and leave what you are used to and leave what was profitable in the past and then come follow christ on the basis of the promise of the lord immediately straightway they left their nets and they followed him in uh, chapter 9 matthew chapter 9 reading from verse 9 and as jesus passed forth from this he saw a man named matthew sitting at the receipt of custom and he saith unto him follow me follow me this one there was no promise attached there was no prophecy attached there was no reward attached there was no office attached and there was no authority attached just follow me and the man was an employed man and the man was a profitably gainfully employed man but he heard the words of jesus the the people who have real faith in christ and sincere faith in christ they don't calculate they don't think what if what if what if he just told me a single sentence I, I, I need to have some questions i need to have explanation and i need to have uh, elucidation i need to have uh, some understanding of the consequence of following follow me and he arose and he followed him in your life as a child of God, in your life as a worker in the vineyard, in your life as a minister, in your life as an overseer, in your life as a servant of the Lord, you must be always ready that God says, do this. And you are not wondering, you see my knowledge and you see my experience and referring to the background of everything i think i need to consider very well analyze very well and put everything in pieces and i need to put everything back i need to be sure that this thing uh, they are calling me to do is going to be profitable and gainful for me no all these people that follow the lord they saw by faith in the future and they knew that what the lord was calling them to is something that will profit them here on earth and in eternity it calls us to salvation we respond it calls us to sanctification we respond it calls us to be endued with power from on high we respond it calls us to follow the word and obey the word and we respond by faith without any delay what the lord has been telling you the words the lord has been speaking to you that demands a real dedication to the lord and zeal for the lord and putting everything on the line and saying yes lord i will follow have you started have you followed or you are just uh, you know reading the bible hearing the word of god and that thing is still there when are you going to manifest faith and decide and demonstrate that you have sincere faith in the Lord? We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the dedication and diligence of sustained faith. Sustained faith. Faith is sound. Faith is sincere. And faith is sustained. That's uh, yesterday you had faith today you are still having that faith sustained and tomorrow you continue with the lord the faith sustained the wind that blows 
will not blow your face away. The trials that come will not trample on your faith. And the experiences of life you have will not make your faith to be expelled. That because of that, because of that, I need to be more careful now. I need to be more cautious now. I need to look very well before I jump. I need to exercise caution because of what I've seen in the past. When you have faith in the Lord, that faith is sustained and that faith remains solid it tells us come back to hebrews chapter 1 chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things so forth the evidence of things not seen evidence of things not seen look at verse 8 hebrews 11 verse 8 by faith abraham when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance of age. And he went out not knowing whither he went. He went out not knowing whither he went. Many times human beings do not want to be the pioneer. They want to find out, has somebody experienced that before? Has somebody been called to a journey like this before? And he responded, and then I want to go to him and interview him. When the Lord called you, and because he's calling me to take a journey and to make a move and to go forward and to get this done, and I have my reservations. I have my hesitation. That's why I come to ask you, Abraham did not have anybody to ask that had gone before him, that had done that before him. And it says by faith, by faith, it, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. Obedience demonstrates faith. If we say, I believe God, I believe God, God is great, God is able, and God is calling me, and God is able to see me through, all that is talk of mouth. It's your obedience that will show that you actually believe in the Lord. And he went out not knowing whether he went. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 6, reading from verse 11. Hebrews 6, 11 and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith be not slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. In John chapter 6, reading from verse 67, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Verse 68, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And then in verse 69, it says, And we believe and we're sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In Hebrews 11, reading from verse 14, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, heavenly country, they seek a country. They have not seen that country. They have not seen that new Jerusalem. They have not seen that heaven. Yet, they believe because faith is the substance of things hopeful. Now, we've seen the Mount of Transfiguration. And we have seen how Jesus was transfigured. And we have seen Moses and Elijah coming 
we know from this evidence of things not seen from this evidence of heaven evidence of the glory of heaven that we have not seen we know that there is a heaven therefore for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country in verse 15 and truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out they might have had opportunity to have returned they came out they had not got to that country they were looking at the country far away but they closed the door against where they came from that's faith there are people who come out but they leave that door ajar, that door a little bit should in case there's disappointment. I know what to fall back on. There's some people that come out, they close the door, they keep the key. Should in case the road is more rough than I thought. Should in case the thing is not as pleasant as I suppose, I still have the key and they go back. But it says truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had the opportunity to have returned. And then in verse 16, it says, but now the desire a better country that is and heavenly wherefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared for them a city the people that have faith in god they never think of backsliding they never think of an easier plan they never think of going back they never think of an alternative i've decided to follow christ no turning back no turning back the world behind me and the cross before me no turning back no turning back no friends may forsake me yet i will follow no turning back no turning back they have burnt the bridge behind them and there is no thinking of if this does not happen if that does not happen they know that the promises of god will be fulfilled and for them there is no turning back the people that turn back they turn back to perdition they turn back to their vomit they turn back to the evil of the world but the people that have faith and they know that whatever happens the storm will be over the difficulties will be over the challenges will be over they will follow the lord come what may they never turn back i pray you'll be one of such people in jesus name we're coming to point number two now point number two the towering pattern of undeniable faith the lord has given us the pattern we have abel we have Enoch, we have Abraham, we have Noah, we have Sarah, and we have Isaac, we have Jacob, we have, um, we have Joseph, and we have Rahab, and we have all these heroes of faith that are lined up for us, that they followed the Lord. There were challenges, there were difficulties, but they knew God is God. And God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Because of that, they kept on without looking back. I will not look back. I will not look back. Because whatever challenge may come, God is greater than every challenge. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 2. For by age, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. And then in verse 3, it tells us, through faith, we understand that the works, the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4, in verse 4, by faith, Abel. 
offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain that by which he obtained witness that he was righteous God testifying of his sacrifice of his offering of his gifts and by each he being dead yet speaketh we're looking at three things here number one obtainable good report through the elders faith number two observable gracious righteousness by an excellent faith Number three, offering gifts, resources with exemplary faithfulness. Number one, obtainable good report through the elders' faith. The elders. Look at Exodus chapter 19, reading from verse 7. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the lord commanded him the elders of the people the elders of the people those are the people going in front of the children of israel if they had faith that's what they'll pass on if they had doubts, that's what they'll pass on. If they had unbelief, that's what they'll pass on. But in this case, these elders had faith. Without faith, we cannot stand. Without faith, we cannot move. Without faith, we cannot walk. Without faith, we cannot make progress. Without faith, we cannot live egypt and then keep on going further and further from egypt and getting near to the land of canaan the land of promise and so moses came to those elders and he spoke to them all the words which the lord had commanded him look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says and all the people answered together and said all that the lord has spoken we will do that the faith did not see the land all that he has said we will do he said do this and you will inherit that he said all that he has said we will do he said he commanded them this is the way to go and if you go this way you will arrive at what i'm giving to you they said all that he has said we will do that's what the lord expects is giving us the condition of inheriting the promises of god and we're telling him all that the lord has spoken sometimes tough sometimes challenging sometimes easy sometimes it is a little bit higher than the grace you had in the past but all that the lord had said we will do that's what the lord expects and by his grace by his strength by faith in him will carry out his word in jesus name in joshua chapter 24 joshua chapter 24 verse 1 and all the people and joshua gathered all the tribes of israel to shake him and called for the elders of israel elders of israel elders of israel for and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and they presented themselves before god before joshua but before god they were conscious that god was there and everything they were hearing they were hearing as the word of the almighty god and they responded well look at verse 31 in verse 31 and israel served the lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived 
Joshua. That's faith. Joshua had the faith. He passed that faith on to the elders, and the elders did not diminish it, dilute it, downgrade it. And the elders took everything in sound, sincere, sustained, and they remained faithful unto the Lord. And it says, All the days of the elders that had lived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. It tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, reading from verse 1. 1 Peter 5 verse 1, The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. The apostles were elders. Peter was an elder. All those prophets and evangelists and pastor teachers, they were elders. And it's important that elders, it's not talking of elders by age, elders by assignment. And the elders by ministry. Elders by the work that we do. Elders and the elders, the great thing in elders is that we have faith in the Lord and we allow that faith to pass on to other people who are following. We never pass on doubt. We never pass on unbelief. We never pass on pretense. We never pass on hypocrisy. We never pass on insincerity. All we pass on is absolute faith in the Lord. Look at number two. Number two is talking about observable, gracious righteousness by an excellent faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, Reading from verse 3. Hebrews 11, reading from verse 3. By faith, through faith, that's verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear now in verse 4 in verse 4 by faith abel understand abel had never known another person to hear their testimony the testimony of how they got saved how their sins were forgiven how their natures were changed how they became righteous in the lord but the Lord had registered each in his heart how to offer sacrifice, excellent sacrifice to the Lord. Sin blotting sacrifice, sin forgiving sacrifice unto the Lord. The kind of sacrifice that will bring salvation, righteousness, redemption. And it says, by faith, Abel offered unto God. God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Cain was his senior brother. And Cain was not going the right direction. And the, the Abel did not say, well, he is my senior. And the way he's going, I will go. No, you have the revelation. The revelation of Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary. And that as you believe implicitly in the Lord, then you'll be forgiven. You'll be saved. And your life will turn around. Whatever others do, I'm going through, I'm going through the revelation of the Lord by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. In the shed blood of the Lamb, 
the shed blood of the sacrifice that cleansed his heart and your thing witness that he was righteous today is the blood of Jesus that washes away our stain that cleanses us from all the sins of the past and when we repent and believe in the Lord then the Spirit of God bears witness with our heart that we are righteous now by His grace, by His gift. God testifying of His gifts, and by it He being dead yet speaking. We're looking at First John. In First John, we're looking at chapter three, verse eleven. For this is the message. That she heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Verse 12, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And where, wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, his gifts were rejected because it had no cleansing blood because it had no redemptive blood because it had no life-changing blood is the blood of the lamb the blood of jesus christ that cleanses us from all sin not the work of our hand that's the sacrifice of Cain And not the fruit of our labor That one does not cleanse sin That's the sacrifice of Cain It says, and wherefore slew he him Because his own works were evil And his brothers righteous Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 In Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 and be found in him not having mine own righteousness that's Cain the righteousness the self-righteousness the fruit of his work thinking that that will bring redemption salvation he says no Paul the apostle said not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And then in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation, holy lifestyle? Holy conduct, holy character, and godliness. Then verse 12, in verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Heaven, new heaven, new earth, where righteousness dwells. And unrighteousness in any form, in any way, cannot enter that new heaven and the new earth righteousness dwelleth there nothing sinful nothing polluting nothing unrighteous nothing wayward nothing wanton will enter there and so if we go to enter there we must come to the fountain of the blood of christ by faith and have our heart our mind our soul, our character, everything washed in the blood of the Lamb. And then He gives us His righteousness so that we can enter the new heavens, the new earth, 
wherein dwelleth righteousness. In verse 14, verse 14, wherefore, beloved, seeing that she looked for such things, be diligent that she may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. We're looking at number three. Number three, offering gifts, resources, with exemplary faithfulness we come to offer our gifts to the lord after salvation then we can offer gifts to the lord after we have reconciled with the lord by the sacrifice of christ only then is sometimes then our gifts and resources and skills are acceptable in the sight of the lord work without grace work without the righteousness of faith that work will profit no one any good because he wants salvation first before we offer anything to the lord that's why somebody cannot just say i have this talent i have this gift I want to work for God. The first thing is, are you saved? Are you born again? Does your life show the evidence that you are born again and your life is new in the sight of the Lord? Well, you might say, I'm born again, I'm born again. But if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And it's only then you can offer anything unto the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we're reading from verse 3. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 3. For to their power, ability, I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, beyond their ability, they were willing of themselves, in verse 4, in verse 4, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints verse 5 and this they did not as we hoped but first gave their own selves to the Lord first my son give me thine heart and first you give your heart to the Lord you have the salvation of the Lord you have the evidence you belong to the Lord First, they gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Unto us, unto us, unto us apostles, unto us the leaders, unto us the overseers. Yes, they give it to the Lord, but we pastors and leaders were the people to direct them put that thing there take that thing away from there adjust that one serve the Lord in this way and so those people first of all a spiritual experience salvation sanctification Holy Ghost baptism and devotion to the word of God then after that they didn't say I'm serving the Lord I don't care what pastor thinks, I don't care what overseer thinks, I don't care whether he appreciates it or not, I am serving Christ. My brother, the Bible does not say that way. The Bible says, first, they gave themselves to the Lord and then unto us by the will of God. We come to First Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also 
our own souls because you are dear unto us that's how to serve the lord and paul the apostle telling the Thessalonian believers you are precious unto us if you're serving the lord the congregation will be so precious unto you that you serve with all your heart with all your soul with all your skill and you serve the people are the people you really appreciate and the people you really love look at verse 9 in verse 9 for ye remember brethren our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we would not be chargeable unto any of you we preached unto you the gospel of God then in verse 10 the lifestyle followed ye are witnesses and God also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe first Corinthians chapter 16 we're reading from verse 15 first Corinthians chapter 16 verse 15 i beseech you brethren ye know the house of stephanas that it is the first fruits of a kind and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints those are the people that offer their gifts and their skill and their resources with exemplary faithfulness in verse 16 it says that she submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth we're looking at hebrews 13 verse 12 hebrews chapter 13 and we're reading from verse 12 wherefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate verse 13 it says let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach verse 14 for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. In our offering of our gifts to the Lord, our service to the Lord, our resources to the Lord, our skill, using everything for the Lord, we're very conscious that here we have no continuing city we seek one to come and we know god is watching as we offer our gift and it is with that consciousness and it is with that understanding it is with that commitment we offer what we have unto the lord knowing that if we work and we're not living righteous then the city the place where we're to get to will not get there because work alone service alone offering alone resources alone will not qualify us for heaven we're saved we're sanctified the adamic nature is so protected our life is sincerely lived and transparently lived in the sight of God knowing that here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come in verse 15 by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually and then it says that he is the fruit of our leaves giving thanks to his name verse 16 in verse 16 but to do good and to communicate forget not for with such sacrifices god is well pleased we're coming to point number three point number three is the triumphant power of an undying faith 
undiminished faith, undimmed faith, a faith that is not decreasing but increasing, a faith that is not subjected to all the vicissitudes of life and buried because of all the things that are happening but a faith that's dynamic a faith that is looking up to god every time and is going from faith to faith and from strength to strength and from glory to glory and from one level to a higher level triumphant power of an undying faith in hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 hebrews 11 verse 5 by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because god had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God then in verse 6 it says but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh unto God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him three things we're looking at number one the transparency of the work of faith Number two, the truthfulness of the work in faithfulness. Number three, the translation of the worthy in his fellowship. Number one. Number one is the transparency of the work of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. Not only his personal testimony, the testimony of God concerning him, the testimony of Christ concerning him, the testimony of the Holy Ghost concerning him, the testimony of heaven concerning him on earth he had this testimony that he pleased god god saw him everywhere he went saw him in everything he did saw him in the private in the public he was transparent there was nothing to hide and because of that walk transparent walk by faith the lord translated him out of earth to heaven without seeing death genesis chapter 5 verse 22 in genesis chapter 5 verse 22 and enoch walked with god after he begat methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters verse 24 in verse 24 and enoch walked with god and he was not for god took him do you walk with god like enoch are you transparent are you spotless are you holy are you righteous as heaven looks at you in the public in the private would you say there is nothing of shame in your work in your character in your conduct enoch walked with god transparently it tells us in romans chapter 13 verse 13 let us walk honestly no deceit no pretense no covering up let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envy verse 14 in verse 14 
but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. First John chapter 2, verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. And then in verse 6, he that says, he abideth in him, ought himself so to walk, so to walk, as he Christ, even as he walked. Welcome to number two here. Number two, the truthfulness of his work in faithfulness. Did you know that Enoch worked for God? Enoch prophesied. Enoch preached. Enoch declared the might of God to the people. Yes, he did. Look at Jude chapter 1 verse 14. In Jude 1 14, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Verse 15, to execute judgment. Enoch did not hide that judgment will come. Eventually, he had been translated before the flood. But all those wicked people, violent people, sinful people, depraved people, all those people that did evil continually in the sight of the Lord, as Enoch had prophesied that judgment was coming, judgment eventually came. We must walk faithfully for the Lord. We must not hide the standard of God from people. We must not hide the coming judgment from people. We must not hide the punishment and perdition of sinners from people. We must walk transparently and walk faithfully before the Lord and let the truth of the word come out from us unto the people. That's how Enoch served. He said, God will come and it will, the Lord will come to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly and they of uh, ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him and then in verse 16 these are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage the Lord had given us the word and the Lord wants us to declare that word without fear, without favor. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14. In First Thessalonians 5 14, now we exhort you, brethren, one them that are unruly. That's how Enoch won the people of his own generation and comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, the patient towards all men. Verse 21. In verse 21, prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Verse 22. Verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That's how Enoch did it. That's how Enoch lived. And that's why he was able to get over there. And he's still there now in heaven, having gone without seeing death. Verse 23. And 
the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ verse 24 faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it he will do it I said he will do it Colossians chapter 1 verse 28 in Colossians 1 28 whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus that's our commitment that's our commission and that's our consecration verse 29 it says in verse 29 whereunto i also labor transparently i also labor truthfully i also labor faithfully whereunto i also labored striving according to his walking which walketh in me mightily ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 in ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 when i say to the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speakest to one the wicked from his wicked way to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at thine hand verse 19 yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul verse 20 again when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity he backslides he says i'm saved i'm saved i'm forever saved i have eternal security and whatever i do does not matter i'm a worker i'm a preacher i'm a servant of the lord I was saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And all these past years, I've been faithful to the Lord. Whatever I do now, does that matter? The Word of God says it matters. Because it says in verse 20 again, When a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. In verse 21 nevertheless if the one the righteous man that the righteous sin not and he does not sin he shall surely live because he is one also thou hast delivered thy soul we're coming to number three number three we're looking at the translation of the worthy in his fellowship we remain in the fellowship of the lord and to be in fellowship with him we live like he wants us to live two cannot work together except they be agreed it tells us enoch walked to please god in fellowship with god 
and the Lord took him away in the rapture and the same thing for those of us who are waiting for the catching away of the saints we live transparently before the Lord Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and he was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God it tells us in verse 6 but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently wholeheartedly sincerely honestly faithfully seek him first john chapter one verse five in first john chapter one verse five this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Verse 6, in verse 6, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we we'll lie and do not the truth. If we say we are saved and we have fellowship with God, and when the rapture takes place, where we'll go? And yet, undercover, behind the curtain, we'll walk in darkness when believers are not there, when our leaders are not there, when the pastor is not there, when fellow believers are not there behind the curtain. we we'll use that as cover up and we we'll walk in darkness and we we'll live in darkness and we we'll live in untruthfulness and we we'll live in hypocrisy and we we'll live in sin if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we we'll lie and do not the truth verse 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ the son cleanses us from all sin revelation chapter 3 verse 4 in revelation chapter 3 verse 4 thou hast a few names even in studies which have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The Lord is coming. And when he comes, I pray, he'll find you worthy. Saved, they'll find you worthy. Enduring to the end, he'll find you worthy. Sanctified and holy, he'll find you worthy. Faithful and righteous, I pray you'll find you worthy. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, he that overcometh the flesh, overcometh the world, overcometh the devil, overcometh trials and temptation, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Verse 6, in verse 6, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. There is heaven, there is paradise, there is the new heavens and the new earth. And only the righteous, those who are saved, those who are holy, those who are righteous will be there. And faith is the substance 
of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. By that faith, the elders obtained a good report. And it is by faith we know that the walls were made for all the things that we see God made them out of nothing and the people who are with god now like abel abel by faith offered a more excellent sacrifice than cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous also enoch by faith he was translated so that he will not see death but before his translation god at this testimony about him, he pleased God. And now it comes to our turn. Abel leading the way and Enoch leading the way. Abraham leading the way all by faith. And we now must remember without faith, it's impossible to please him. Everyone that comes to God for salvation, for sanctification, for holiness, for righteousness, everyone that comes to God to present anything before God must believe that He is and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He doesn't want us to seek Him with half heartedness, with coldness, with hypocrisy. He wants all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, everything we have inside us to seek the Lord and those that seek the the Lord, according to his word, will find him. You will find him. I said you will find him. And he will help you and qualify you for that glorious city above in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. We have heard the word of God. And these uh, people we have read about, they heard the word and they followed after the Lord. Let, let's rise up and open our mouth to the Lord and seek the Lord fervently and seek the Lord diligently and seek the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul and seek the Lord honestly, diligently so that we'll be found of him. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let him hear you pray. You are not meditating, you are praying. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. If God has revealed anything to you that your Christ come now, nothing will hold you down. Tell the Lord. Present it before the Lord honestly, faithfully, transparently, and say, Lord, here am I. Cleanse me, He will. Wash me, He will. Turn my life around for the better, He will. Make me righteous through and through, He will. Make me holy, holy in heart, holy in my mind. Holy in my thoughts, holy in the private, holy in the public. He will. He's not interested in hypocrisy. He wants transparency. It's not interested in supposition, I think. It's interested in real, true devotion, dedication to the Lord, decision for the Lord, real faith, practical faith in the Lord. Not just faith for healing, faith. For steadfastness. Faith for daily righteousness. Practical righteousness. Righteousness at work, in the office, the marketplace, at home, 
away from home purity of heart holiness of life transparency of life nothing to hide nothing shameful nothing evil nothing healing faith for right standing in the sight of God faith for claiming the promise of God the promise of salvation freedom from sin faith for sanctification holiness of heart and life faith for the promise of the baptism in the holy ghost he shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon your faith faithful service serving the lord in the way acceptable unto him faith for strength all the way through faith without eye service Faith without the pressure of the Adamic nature. Faith. Faith that walks steadily in the path of righteousness and holiness. Faith with conviction. Faith with confidence. Faith with full, untarnished consecration before the Lord. Faith with diligence, total yieldedness, faith with absolute surrender unto the Lord. They gave themselves to the Lord and also to us by the will of God good report through faith people who know you heaven that knows you God who knows you giving a good report about you That your faith is real. Your faith is genuine. Faith. Faith that lives as it wants us to live. Faith that loves passionately faith that works by love faith that offers our gifts to the Lord without any reservation Faith that offers our resources as skills to the Lord 
with all diligence with all devotion and the faith that makes us to live transparently walking by faith walking in faithfulness faith that keeps us in fellowship with the holy god of heaven no guilt in the heart no condemnation in the heart no displeasure to the lord a life appointed by god a life approved of god a life appreciated acceptable in the sight of the lord a life ready for translation ready for the catching away of the saints ready for the coming of the lord In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord give a good, firm, irreversible answer to your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for the revelation of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you have reminded us of the value and the worth and the treasure of faith once again we pray lord all that your word has promised that faith will do in our lives we surrender that life to you we dedicate that life to you and we offer our life without any reservation unto you let your promise be fulfilled in every life in jesus name Amen. salvation affirmed Amen. sanctification confirmed Amen. power of the holy ghost in every life to you in jesus name Amen. a life without spot a life without wrinkle a life without hypocrisy a life without pretense a life without righteousness totally righteous committed unto you holy acceptable in your sight grant everyone in jesus name and the power to serve you profitably the power to serve you that many souls will come through our ministry confirm in every life in jesus name day or night public or private anywhere everywhere we are grant us a rapturable life that lord when the lord shall come we will not be found wanting we have spoken about rapture to other people heaven to other people paradise to other people that place none of us will miss it in jesus name help us to continue enduring and serving resisting temptation living in righteous and holiness all the days of our lives until the very end in jesus name confirm your blessing upon every life we well, thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray Amen.